Section 7.3 is trigonometric equations. Trigonometric equations are equations that involve trigonometric functions, and their solutions are the values that satisfy those equations. So for example, if we have solved the equation cosine of theta equals 1 half, we want to find all the angles for theta where cosine of that angle equals 1 half. Sometimes they will give you a specific domain to write your angles in. Sometimes, like this one, they will say give a general formula for all of the solutions because there's technically an infinite number of them. Or sometimes, like this one also does, they will tell you to list a specific number of solutions. I'm going to start by listing out the eight solutions and then work backwards to the general formula from there. So first I've listed out the first two solutions, which are the two that are between 0 and 2 pi. So pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3 is where cosine equals 1 half between 0 and 2 pi. So then if I want to find the next place, if I continue, again, thinking about the unit circle as a Ferris wheel, if I continue around the circle, the next place where cosine is going to be equal to 1 half is at that same location as pi over 3. But if I go all the way around the circle once and then to it, so I'm going to take pi over 3 and I'm going to add 2 pi to it, which is the same thing as 6 pi over 3. So the next place is going to be 7 pi over 3. And then same thing with the next one. If I keep going around the circle, the next one's going to be if I go all the way around the circle once and then stop at where 5 pi over 3 is. So I'm going to take 5 pi over 3 and I'm going to add 2 pi to that one as well and I end up with 11 pi over 3. So if I continue on this pattern and just keep adding 2 pi to each of these, the next ones I get are 7 pi over 3 plus 2 pi is going to be 13 pi over 3, 11 pi over 3 plus 2 pi is going to be 17 pi over 3, then if I add 2 pi to 13 pi over 3, I get 19 pi over 3. And if I add 2 pi to 17 pi over 3, I get 23 pi over 3. So these are the first eight places where cosine is equal to 1 half. So now if we want to write the general formula, there's kind of two things that are happening. The two places between 0 and 2 pi. And then every time we're just adding some multiple of 2 pi. So that's how we're going to write our general formulas. So I have theta is equal to pi over 3 plus 2k pi, where k is some integer, so that's full rotations around the circle. And then also 5 pi over 3 plus 2k pi, where again k is an integer, so those are full rotations around the circle. So we're looking for the angles that will make this specific equation true. So for these next two, they're specifically saying we just want the angles between 0 and 2 pi. So not a specific number, not all of them like the general formula, just any of the ones that fall between 0 and 2 pi. So we have 2 sine theta plus root 3 equals 0 and 4 secant theta plus 6 equals negative 2. So always the first thing, just like any other type of equation, we want to isolate the function where your variable exists. So for 2 sine theta plus root 3 is equal to 0, I'm going to subtract root 3 from both sides and then divide both sides by 2. So I've isolated the sine of theta. So sine of theta is equal to negative root 3 over 2. And now I can just answer that for all angles between 0 and 2 pi. So we end up with theta to be 4 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Be careful because we we're just talking about inverse trig. This is not inverse trig, so it's not restricted to the specific quadrants. We want all the angles between 0 and 2 pi, where sine will equal negative root 3 over 2. So go ahead and pause the video and try 4 secant of theta plus 6 equals negative 2. I isolated secant by subtracting 6 and then dividing both sides by 4, and I get secant is equal to negative 2. For me, it's easier to think of secant as the in reciprocal of cosine, so I flipped it over and said that therefore cosine would equal negative 1 half, so therefore theta is 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. For these ones, we have something attached to theta on the inside. So just like the others, the first thing would always be to isolate the trig function. So get rid of anything that's attached to the outside. But now this 2 is attached to theta. It's not attached to the outside. So what we want to think about is this is saying that this trig function is moving twice as fast as a regular trig function. And we're going to have to compensate for that. So the first thing I do is I adjust my domain that they're giving us, this interval that they're giving us, to match whatever is inside the trig function. So because theta is being multiplied by 2, I multiplied each piece of my interval by 2. So 0 times 2 is 0, theta times 2 is 2 theta, which matches what's inside this trig function, and 2 theta times 2, 2 pi times 2 is going to be 4 pi. So now when I solve this trig function, I'm going to solve it instead of between 0 and 2 pi, I'm going to solve it between 0 and 4 pi. So my sine function has already been isolated, so I don't need to get rid of anything attached to the outside. So I'm just going to deal with sine is equal to 1 half. 
So I'm going to find all the places where sine is equal to 1 half, but instead of between 0 and 2 pi, I'm going to do it between 0 and 4 pi. So that would be pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 13 pi over 6, and 17 pi over 6. So because this is whatever is sine is equal to 1 half, then these angles are what's inside of sine. So these are going to be equal to 2 theta instead of regular theta. So now to solve for theta, I have to get rid of what's attached to theta, and so I'm going to divide everything by 2. So if I take all my angles and I divide them by 2, that's the same thing as multiplying by 1 half, and so I end up with pi over 12, 5 pi over 12, 13 pi over 12, and 17 pi over 12, which all of these angles are now between 0 and 2 pi. If we think about the graph of this trig function, it's going twice as fast as a normal sine function, which means there's going to be two of these sine functions between 0 and 2 pi, which is why there are four answers instead of normally there would be only two answers. So go ahead and pause the video and try tangent of theta minus pi over 2 is equal to 1. The first thing I did was I adjusted my interval to match what's attached to theta on the inside, so I subtracted pi over 2 from each part. So instead of looking between 0 and 2 pi, I'm going to look between negative pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. There's nothing attached to the outside of tangent, so I just evaluated where does tangent equal 1 in this interval. And I end up with pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. So it's not actually any different than the original interval, but you still have to take that into account. And that's equal to what's e inside of tangent, so theta minus pi over 2. And then I took everything and I added pi over 2, and we end up with theta to be 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. Here we have some ones that involve some square trig functions. So we have 2 sine squared theta minus 3 sine of theta is equal to negative 1. Just a note, when you see a power on the trig function like this, it really means take sine of theta, evaluate that, and then square it. The first thing to check when you have these is to see if all of the trig functions in the problem are the same. In this case, they are, so we're good. We'll talk about what happens when they're different in a minute. So now what we want to do is we want to make it look like something we already know how to do, very similar to the ones like this we did with exponentials back when we were doing exponential equations. So for example, if I let a be sine of theta, I end up with 2 times a squared minus 3 times a is equal to negative 1. So this is something that we already know how to solve. We have something squared, a linear version of that something, and a constant. So I'm going to solve this just like I solved my regular quadratics. I moved everything over to one side. I got 2a squared minus 3a plus 1 is equal to 0. And then I factored 2a minus 1 times a minus 1 is equal to 0. And then zero product property, I set each one equal to 0 and solved for a. So I got a is equal to 1 half and a is equal to 1. But we're not solving for a, we're solving for theta. So I want to make sure at the end I re-replace a with sine of theta. So I'm going to have sine of theta is equal to 1 half and sine of theta is equal to 1. So where between 0 and 2 pi does sine of theta equal to 1 half? That would be pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. And where does sine of theta is equal to 1? That would be at pi over 2. So this is going to act very similar to a quadratic. You have a something squared plus a linear version of that something plus a constant term. So you can factor and then solve. If you do replace, if you substitute like I did here, just make sure at the very end you unsubstitute and solve for the angle that you're actually looking for. So go ahead and pause the video and try 2 cosine squared theta plus cosine theta is equal to 0. So I factored this one. I noticed that I have a GCF of cosine of theta, so I factored out a cosine of theta, and I left with cosine of theta plus 1 is equal to 0. So then again, 0 product property, cosine of theta is equal to 0, and 2 cosine of theta plus 1 is equal to 0. Where does cosine of theta equal 0 between 0 and 2 pi? That would be pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Where does cosine equal negative 1 half? that would be 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. So when you have a quadratic looking one with the, everything being the same trig function, then you treat it just like a quadratic. Make sure you solve all the way to theta at the end. So on these ones, we now have two different trig functions in the same problem. 3 cosine of theta plus 3 is equal to 2 sine squared theta. So we can't do them exactly the way we did the previous one, but we can go back to chapter 6 and use our trigonometric identities to help us create an equation that has all the same trig function in them. So we have trig identities that relate sine and cosine together, and specifically sine squared and cosine squared together. If you remember our Pythagorean identity, it says that sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. So we can use this identity to help us substitute to create a 
equation that only has one trig function. We're gonna base it on which one is not squared. So the cosine is not squared. So we're going to change the sine squared into something with cosine squared. So if sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to one, that means that sine squared of theta is equal to one minus cosine squared. So I can change out the sine squared in the equation for a one minus cosine squared. Now I have one similar to what we were just doing where all of our trig functions are the same. So I'm going to solve this exactly the same way. I distributed in the two and I got two minus two cosine squared on the right side. Then I moved everything over to one side to get one side equal to zero. So I got two cosine squared plus three cosine of theta plus one equals zero. I factored into two cosine of theta plus one times cosine of theta plus one is equal to zero. Zero product property, you end up with cosine of theta is equal to negative one half, which gives you two pi over three and four pi over three. And I got cosine of theta is equal to negative one, which gives you theta to be pi. So go ahead and pause the video and try the last one. Cosine squared plus sine of theta is equal to negative one. So I have cosine squared theta plus sine of theta is equal to negative one. I want this equation all in terms of sine because that's the one that's not squared. So if I take my Pythagorean identity and I solve it for cosine squared, I get that it's equal to one minus sine squared. So I replaced cosine squared with one minus sine squared. I then moved everything over to one side and got it equal to zero and I got sine squared of theta minus sine of theta minus two is equal to zero. Factor this, I get sine of theta plus one times sine of theta minus two is equal to zero. So therefore sine of theta equals negative one and sine of theta is equal to two. Sine of theta equals negative one at theta equals pi, three pi over two and sine of theta never equals two. So similar to the ones we did with exponentials, sometimes you'll end up with one that's not true, it's not possible. So this part doesn't give you anything. So this has been solving trigonometric equations. There's a few different ways to do it. If you just have the one trig function, make sure you isolate the trig function itself before you solve. If there's something attached to theta, adjust your interval before you choose your angles and then solve for your theta after you find your angles. For the quadratic ones, if you have them all the same trig function, great. If they're not the same trig function, you wanna use your Pythagorean identities or later on other identities that we know in order to make them all be the same trig function.